Do you have a web app like this with different front end and back end languages? In this app, we've got Next.js front end hosted on Vercel, and then the back end is actually Python for doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Now, having Python be deployed on Vercel is possible, but this app is a little complex, and I wanted a separate back end for it. So, I used a service called render.com to actually host this mono repo and Python backend so it can do a lot of the processing. So I'll show you how to get this set up and hook up everything inside of render.com so that we can use it in our front end application. If you don't know me, I'm Warren Walters. I like to build fun stuff. In this video, we're gonna figure out how we can get our Vercel front end hooked up to our render.com backend and get everything on the back end deployed on render. Let's jump into it. Let's take a look at this application really quickly. It acts as a pseudo mono repo. So we've got this Next.js front end over here that is deployed on Vercel and it has its own database schema and its own database that has all the users and stuff like that inside of it. Then we have this backend dash simple, which is a Python backend using fast API and it is deployed on render. So this is where some of the interesting parts come into play because even though Vercel has some options to deploy Python applications, I wanted to have a separate backend and it to be deployed on a dedicated service like Render so that it could have its own resources and just keep it kind of completely separate because some of the transactions, some of the processes that are running on the backend are going to be a little long. This application takes in different sources, so things like PDF, websites, even large text, and it uses different LLMs to process them down. And that process can take a little bit of time and we don't want the user waiting on it. We want to kind of be asynchronous and just have the heavy lifting be inside of Python. We opted for was making sure that this was its own backend. With that comes different challenges, like how do you deploy a backend successfully and then hook it up to a front end like next JS application deployed on Vercel. And this was an interesting and fun challenge. So there are a few key things that are important to know about this app and it render makes it super easy to get this deployed. So the first thing that we're going to need, of course, is just making sure that you have a requirement.txt. So all of the different packages that you need, you have the versions inside of here, and then that will build successfully. The other things we have is this render dash start and this render dash build. So these are going to become important because we have custom builds that are going on since some of the source processing requires like Chrome and Selenium and it needed some other things. This gives you an example of how you can build out custom scripts for your build and your start commands. But in the documentation of render, it shows you how to just use the most basic pieces of this just so that you can get started. And you can even see it here, right? This is what we needed for the build command, making sure that we're installing all of our requirements. And in the render dash start, we're making sure that we are starting our fast API application. Before we jump into deploying this onto render, let's make sure that the application is loading. And since this is a mono repo sort of setup, I'm going to CD into my backend and then I should have some commands in here. I am on Windows, at least for right now. So we are setting our Python environment, which should have all of the requirements set up, all the packages already started. And then I'm just gonna see if this runs successfully. We do have some warnings coming through, but it does look like it has started. And we can go to our localhost port 8000 slash health. That's a route that I have pre-built out in here and see that it is healthy, right? And we're getting some messages back here. We don't have a favicon and that's fine. So everything seems to be working locally. Let's jump over to render. So now we can get it deployed and use it in multiple places. If you haven't heard of render, you're probably missing out. It's a great way of deploying all sorts of different types of applications. They have tutorials for things like Python, Node, and it works really well for just getting things spun up fast 
and making sure that it works very easily. So there is a free tier. Of course, there are some paid tiers in here, but the free tier is very generous. It's what I'm personally on until I bring this application live. And there are limitations, but they allow you to spin up your app, get a custom domain, just really test out everything before you need to take it live. And then they have some other plans, you know, depending on when you're watching this, these may change, but it's very important to know. And I love when these sort of services give you the opportunity to try this stuff out, make sure that your application is working successfully. And when you need to scale it, then you can start paying for it. All right, so we're in our dashboard and we can see that I've already deployed my certification backend, but I'm gonna go through the process for you all just so you can see it from start to finish. If you didn't already sign up or log in, I highly encourage you to log in with your GitHub because it just makes things so much easier, but you can always log in later as well. For the fast API, we're going to choose the web service option from here, but you can see all of the different options that we have in here, including Postgres, which is a nice way of just having an additional database for your application. Since I'm pre-logged into GitHub, we can see that a lot of my repos are coming through here automatically. If you haven't logged in though, you can connect over here with GitLab, Bitbucket, and of course GitHub. I'm gonna choose my certification helper proof of concept. And over here, of course, you can give it a name. I'm just gonna leave it at that for right now, just so that we can see it. I'm not gonna actually deploy this one, but I will rebuild the other one that I have so we can see what the process looks like. And then here we can pick our language. We've got a ton of different languages and Docker as an option, which is really great for you to just have everything together in one selection. Now the branch that we want to go off of, you can see that there's a bunch of branches and if you had like a development branch versus the main branch, but I recommend just using the main branch as your source of truth. And then for the root repo, most of you are going to leave this blank or even do SRC, but since we're working in this kind of mono repo setting that I have here, we're gonna navigate into the backend dash simple. And all I would need to do is type in backend dash simple, and we can see that it is migrating or changing, right? It's going into the correct folder structure that we have in this mono repo setup that I have here. Then there's the build commands. You can see that it fills in this by default, but since we have that special build command that we need inside of here, I'm gonna do dot slash render dash build dot sh. This will run that custom build script that I have created, which installs the Chrome stuff. And then as you noticed at the end of it, we made sure to install our requirements just like before. So it's all lined up there. And then similar thing, we've got dot slash render start dot sh and this is going to be that start command but just checking we have some additional checks in here then we have our instance types this is very important now you can always start off on the hobbyist and then upgrade as you see fit the main thing about the hobby plans to be aware of is that your instance will spin down, right? They will go dormant if they are not used, right? If they're inactive, which is a reasonable trade-off for getting access to a fully fledged server spun up and hosted for you. Like I mentioned before, I recommend starting off on the hobby tier. And then if you need to upgrade to the other tiers as you start to scale. And of course, making sure to add in your environment variables and we can even see that they give you some options to generate random environment variables if you need them. If you don't need it, don't worry about the advanced settings inside of here. I wanna keep this tutorial very short and to the point. And then of course you would do the deploy process. Now I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna switch back over to the certification backend project. It's the same exact thing. We can look through the settings on the certification backend. It's set up with all the same stuff that I just mentioned. There's the correct folder. There is the build command and then the auto deploy and commit. And I have to mention definitely about auto deploy and commit. This has to be one of my favorite features of all of these tools that help do your deployments and host your servers for you. So all you gotta do is commit to the main branch and then a few minutes later, it's going to be processing. All right, you can see some of my previous builds over here, but let's actually run a build. I'm gonna clear up my build cache and do another deployment and we can see how long this process takes. Depending on the complexity of your application, this may take more time 
or less time, but we can see here that it's cloning down my repository and starting that build process. So it's gonna go through that Chrome installation piece so we can see some of the pieces in here and just making sure that everything is working well. If there were any issues, we would see them pop up in here and then you can bring that back into your IDE, try to debug the issue and then ideally just commit and push to your main branch and then voila, it is there. So we'll give this a few seconds to process and render and then we'll take a look at the finally working app. While this is going, I'm just gonna jump over to the documentation for deploying a fast API using render. So there is a template if you want to start with that. And a lot of the things that we just walked through, right? Creating a web service, selecting the language, here's the default build command, and here's that start command for the fast API. We can see the example repo inside of here. There's also render.yamls that we can create, which are very handy in terms of automatically setting values, but we'll get into that maybe in another video. And while this is going, looks like it's getting pretty close to finishing the build it is done. I wanted to also share with you all the build scripts that I had in case you wanted it. So these will be linked down in the description below. There is the render dash build dot sh and then my start as well. If you're trying to do something similar with Selenium and you need Chrome binaries, this is a great option for you there. And we can see it's doing the final checks. Here's that same warning that we got when we were starting up before. And now it looks like our service is live. There we go. Render gives you a URL that you can use. I can copy this and do slash health. And we see that our service once again is healthy. So this is great. Didn't take very long at all to do this build process. And here we go, we're still missing that <laughs> favicon. So maybe we should get that updated. We have a fully deployed Python backend using fast API and render.com, super simple. And then if I go to my full app, which is hosted on Vercel, we're seeing these sources start to pull through, right? These are the sources and all the things on the render backend. So it's Really great to see this application come to life and to use the best tools for the situation, right? We've got Vercel and Next.js for the front end, making it very fast, and then Python and Render for the heavy lifting on the back end. There you have it. It only took four minutes from the start of the build to actually having it completed and ready to be used. Have you used render before? Let me know in the comments down below or even better, send your app. So put the URL of your application and how you are using it. I would love to check it out and just get different ideas on how to build out these types of applications. Of course, like I mentioned, the gist is going to be in the description if you're trying to get that code for getting Chrome setup and Selenium and some of that processing. And of course, I am Walters954. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, I believe in you.